Well, hello everyone and welcome to another video with yours truly, Fran Agulto with WP Engine. I'm a member on the developer relations team there on the headless WordPress side of the house. In today's video, I'm going to go over and discuss WP GraphQL and how it does cursor-based pagination in headless WordPress along with using my favorite framework Next.js and Apollo GraphQL for the client. So let's go ahead and dive right in. So what is pagination? So pagination on the web is defined as a process of breaking or separating the content of a website into different pages. The user can use links such as next, previous, and page numbers to navigate between pages and display sets of data when there's too much data to display all of the records at one time. Now, in WordPress, the traditional side uses what is called offset-based pagination. This method groups within the page numbers, essentially putting parameters within the client request with a specific limit or number of results, and then offset the number of records that need to be skipped. So um, focusing on the screen here, this is a traditional WordPress um, website that I have installed here. And if I scroll down, just so that we're all clear on what pagination is, I have a set of numbers at the page that are essentially links that are clickable to load more data to see more posts on these pages. So that's exactly what pagination is. Now in WP GraphQL, out of the box, this ships with what is called cursor-based pagination as opposed to offset-based pagination. Now this method loads the initial set of records and provides a cursor, which is the reference point for the next request to utilize it and make the request for the next batch of records. So let's go over to our WP admin and into our graphical IDE editor to see what those queries look like with cursor-based pagination. Navigating over into my WP admin, I'm in the graphical IDE now in my query composer, and I've composed a query right here that is pulling um, all my posts. And what's happening here is in this initial query, I'm asking for my list of posts with the arguments of grabbing the first three posts here, and then after that, returning null or starting from the beginning of that post list. Um, so what if instead of starting at the beginning of the list, I want to request the list of posts after the first three? Now, this is where the cursor field and page info type comes in. Now, here's the page info type, and then it has a field called has next page. And then it also has a field called end cursor. Now, the has next page field allows you to find out if you have more pages with your post on that data set. Now, the end cursor field right here under it is a, a field that is a unique identifier string that represents the last post of the data set you are requesting. It points to the last post on the request. So let's see what it looks like. Let's pl press play and fire off that request. So here is the unique identifier string right here. Now, essentially what's gonna happen is I can ask now for every post before or after that unique identifier string that end cursor gives me instead of starting from the beginning or null. So in this case, the post tied to that unique ID is down here, which is, uh, as you guys can see down here, it's OB, OB1. Now, when I grab that unique ID string and use it with the after argument instead of null, the query will start from that post and give me all the posts after it. So let's see what it looks like. So if I take this, unique identifier string and replace the null value with its string and press play. This gives me all the post after ob1 from the end cursor endpoint. Now this opens up a rem this opens up a rem of possibilities. You could just swap out the end cursor and fire off queries to get the next subset of results after the last one from that cursor. You can do it bidirectionally as where you can get the last three before the end cursor, paginating both forward and backward. There's also performance gains in this method because it uses the unique ID to locate the record and then counts forward or backward from that ID instead of loading every data set in the case of offset pagination, 
it requires fewer resources in loading batches of data. So this is, this is awesome, right? Now what we need to do is rewrite our query so that we can dynamically pass in the argument in the fields instead of hard coding the string. So let me go ahead and copy the query that I've already made and paste it in here to show you what it looks like. All right, so what's going on in this query here is we're accepting two uh, input arguments, first and after, which is an integer, and after, which is the string. So in our front-end application, we can pass in the first three posts when the user hits the load more button, and then our app will grab the end cursor and will pass in different query variables, variables, excuse me, to get the next set of data batch results on whichever end cursor string was tied to that post. Uh, this query is now ready, so let's go over to our front end, which we're using Next.js, and the Apollo client to make this uh, query put to use. Let's go into over to Visual Studio Code now, code now and navigate over to my Next.js application. And let's talk about the load more posts component that I have created in the components directory here within the file structure. Hit that drop down, and here's the component load more post. Now this is a long file and there's a lot of code, so let's break this down into chunks. So at the top of the file, I'm importing the use query hook and the GraphQL uh, client giving, uh, grabbing it from Apollo, and then I'm importing next link from next.js because we're gonna need these uh, imports within this file. Now the next thing you see is the query right here that uh, we made in graphical back in our uh, WordPress admin with the assistance of WP GraphQL. And this will allow us to fire off requests to WP GraphQL and use cursor-based pagination. Now the following line shows the number of posts I wanna grab uh, by size uh, and number within this const called batch size. So when the user hits the load more button, it will populate five posts on each load. Now, next is a default uh, function that I've exported, and that's called load more post right here. And in this function, I'm making use of the use query hook in Apollo to pass in my query called get posts from the top of the file. Next, I have variables that I pass in, which was the batch size I defined to be five and after null or start from the beginning. Now, this function gets fired off each time the user clicks the load more button. Now, following that, I have some inf, uh, if conditionals here that I'm going to highlight, and that invokes execution of possible states if an error loading or if we have no post and the request has finished, then we have no more post published. Those checks have all passed. It means, hey, we have more posts to be displayed. Now, there are two variables that I set next here, right here. The first one is called posts. And this is taking the data that Apollo gives us back and drills down into it with a post and their nested data. The second variable is called have more post, and this is a Boolean which checks if we have more posts to load, but if there are no more posts, we'll have to execute something else. So now we can display uh, our post uh, within a return statement with some data drilling with the levels of nesting that comes from the query. Now, focusing on the return statement right here, let's start with the uh, unordered list tag, um, right as we have here. And within the this unordered list tag, what's going on is within the tag, we are mapping over post and returning a single post with a database ID, a title, and its slug. Now, for each of those, we are displaying a list item with a list tag. This item will have that title that has a link to it that actual individual blog post page links to. Now, lastly, down here, let me highlight that, um, we have the load more button. Now, this button, when clicked, will load the next batch of posts from the cursor's point. In order to do this, we take our have more posts starting there Boolean. And if we do have more, we'll display a form with a button inside of it. And inside that button, when it's clicked, we have an on submit handler that calls the fetch more function in Apollo and passes in the variable called after that grabs the current end cursor, which is the unique identifier that represents the last post in the data set to grab the next five after that cursor. Now this is done and I uh, placed this com um, component 
in the pages uh, directory of Next.js to have its own route and path called load-more.js. So let's see how this works. Let me pull up the browser here, start the dev server, go back to the browser, and it's going off port 3000. So when I click more, there we go, and then I have a load more button, and it loads batches of five, loading, load some more, and there you go. All the posts have loaded. Stoked, this works. Awesome, this works. Now let's bring our attention back to Visual Studio Code as I want to focus and talk about the Relay specification and the Apollo client and what it has to do with pagination. Let's go over to Visual Studio Code here and then go into my lib directory and I have an apollo.js file here. So the Relay specification contains functionality to make manipulating one to many relationships easy using a standardized way of expressing these one to many relationships. Now the standard connection model offers ways of slicing and paginating through connection. The Apollo client can implement relay style pagination with the relay spec using merge and read functions, which means all the thorny details of connections and edges and page info can be abstracted away into a single reusable helper function. That's awesome. And WP GraphQL itself also follows the relay spec. So in the abstract, Apollo has an initial list, and when you call the fetch more function, it adds the list together and stores those in memory, and that becomes a list that you, you are working with. Now Apollo does this appending for you under the hood. So let's take a look at our apollo.js file here to see how this is done. Now on line four here, I'm initializing um, the cache variable to a new in-memory cache right here. And then the instance um, is being imported at the top right here with the Apollo client and in-memory cache. Um, and then we can add the uh, and define the type policies right here, okay, which is a config object used to customize the cache's behavior on a type-by-type -type basis. In this case, what we are defining in our types here are the fields of the post type, okay? And now, once those are defined, we can now use the relay spec used by WP GraphQL to tell Apollo and its spec in our pagination method to go ahead and append the previous and next, next links list, excuse me, together using cursor-based pagination by calling the relay style pagination right here function as provided. Okay, so now at the bottom, lastly, we're gonna create a, a new Apollo client right here. Whoops right there, and we provide it with our GraphQL endpoint with a process.env method right here, and I have that in my .env.local file that it's, I'm grabbing that endpoint data, uh, GraphQL endpoint from, and then that's it. That's awesome, it's all set up. Now the next functionality I'm gonna to add to my site is being able to click links on a single blog post's page footer. These links will allow the user to go to the previous or next post from the starting point of the individual blog post page they are currently on. So in order to do this, the first thing I'm gonna to have to do is modify the WP GraphQL schema so that we can query for the previous and next post. We can't do this out of the box currently with WP GraphQL. So let me go back to WP Admin and show you steps on how to take care of this. So I'm back in my WP Admin here. And this is where we can extend and modify the GraphQL schema to query for previous and next post. Since like I stated, it does not come out of the box. My good friend Kellen Mace luckily has created a PHP file that has done this and here's the page to the repo. I will leave the links in the YouTube um, page when I upload the video so you guys will have all the things that you need to follow along. Now let's just jump back into WP Admin. Like I said, I uploaded it as a zip and downloaded it into the plugins, called it Pagination Fields, and we're off. We're good to go. Now let's go to Graphical IDE and talk about what this query is doing. So essentially with this plugin, now we extend and modify our WP GraphQL schema and we can query the post node for previous and next post links. So, right here, this query, I'm just asking for a single post via its 
slug right here as the variable. And then at the bottom of the query is where I'm able to also query for previous post and next post. So um, this is great. And this is where the um, single post query will act, will act as a starting point from previous to next. So let's see what the result will look like as we add in the query variable. And let's use the Mandalorian slug here. Slug. The Okay, let's press play and see if we can get some stoke back. All right, there you got it. We've got the Mandalorian, its content, slug, and the previous post to that is Solo, a Star Wars story. The next post is Obi-Wan. Perfect. This is working. Now let's go ahead and put this into dy dynamic route parameter file within our Next.js app. All right, let's jump back into our Visual Studio code into our Next.js application here. And let's go into the pages directory and into a, our blog uh, folder. And within this blog folder, I have used uh, Next.js's convention of dynamic route file and parameter where I just wrapped, in this case, our parameter is gonna be the slug. So I've wrapped it dynamically with two bracket, or with a bracket, excuse me, the bracket syntax. And this is a long file, a uh, long code block. So let me explain what's going on here. Now, the first thing is, at, let's go down to the bottom of the file. And at the bottom of the file here, I'm gonna have a couple of asynchronous functions that Next.js provides. And these are called get static paths and get static props. Now up in my get static, uh, get static pass function right here. Okay. Uh, I am nesting a second function here called get post slugs. And what this does is it gets all the slugs for all posts from WordPress and maps over that array of paths to return a slug. Okay, and this will tell Next.js what pages to use to build the dynamic routes. Now this file is long, so let's break this down in chunks. I'm gonna to go to the bottom of the file right here, uh, and I have two uh, asynchronous functions that Next.js provides called get static path and get static props. Now, sorry, there is the get static pass function right here, and within this get static pass function, I have a nested function here called um, get post slugs, which is async. Um, now, essentially what this is doing is this grabs all the slugs for all the posts from WordPress with this query, and then it returns the array of paths uh, with a slug. Now, this tells Next.js what uh, pages to use to build the dynamic routes. Now let's scroll down to our get static props function here. Now in this get static prop, uh, excuse me, now in this get static props function down here, we're telling it what props to pass in from WordPress and query WP GraphQL with get post for the specific post data we want back about that post, including the next and the previous post. Um, when that function is run, we return the post results. Now let's scroll up to the top of a file and turn our attention there. At the top of the file here, I have a default function called post, which will be the component to grab the destructured data in our const right here, which is the uh, title, content, previous post, and next post. That will equal the post. Um, and this is what we're querying from WP GraphQL, and we can put it into our JSX. Now I have that data I want for a single post page within a div for the content and an H1 for the title in my return statement right here. So here's the title, and then I have the content of that single post. Now focusing down onto the footer tag here, um, there's a bunch going on here. So let's talk this through. So starting with previous post right here, which is a Boolean, if the post exists, we display that previous post title. Now, using next link right here, 
um, that user has the access to a clickable link to route them to that previous post page. Otherwise, if we don't have a previous post, it will render null and nothing will appear. After that, we essentially have similar JSX right here, which is a Boolean as well, which um, says next post, post, and it does the exact same thing as previous post, except it'll show and render the next post with the access for the user with a clickable link. Okay, so that's awesome. This should work. Let's go ahead and run it in our browser and see if we can get some, uh, some pagination stoke here. So I'm gonna go into the browser. Let me refresh this. Okay, so I should be able to click in any of these post titles. Let's go Obi-Wan. Okay, awesome. So now I'm showing the previous post, which is the Mandalorian, and the next post, which is Andor. So if I go to Andor, I have the access to the previous post, Obi-Wan, and the next post, Boba Fett. Awesome, this works, jam stoked. Now pagination is an important part and very common in modern websites and applications. In this video, I hope you took away a better understanding of how to paginate in headless WordPress with the best in-class frameworks and tools, WP GraphQL, Next.js, and the Apollo client, as well as understanding the differences between offset-based pagination and cursor-based pagination. As always, hit us up in our Discord server and let me know what you're working on in Headless WordPress. Until next time, happy coding.